In this video, I'm going to show you exactly where to set your stop loss and take profit targets before you enter a trade. Because those that plan to fail, fail to plan. And that's not what we like to do around here. Now, real quick, before we get into the video, when it comes to charting and planning trades, all of this is done in TradingView. I see so many people just trying to use the chart on Robinhood, uh, just using Webull. And don't get me wrong, Webull's platform is decent, but it didn't all click for me until I really got a grasp of TradingView. And for those of you looking for a guide on how to set up and use TradingView, be sure to check out this video right here. And now without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so before I show you where to put your take profits and stop losses, I want to show you how to use the tools, which is a very important part of it. If you've already seen my video on how to set up and use TradingView, you can probably skip ahead on this part, but if not, I got you. All right, getting into it over here on the side, we have forecasting and measurement tools and what we're going to want to do. Click on this. There are two tools. You may want to star them. It'll put these in your favorite bar. This is actually my favorite bar down here. These are the tools I use. And if you want to learn how to set that up uh, with the tools I use so you can do this all on your own as you're learning, check out my video on TradingView. Getting back to it, we're going to be using the long position and short position tool in this video. So if you're in a stock and you're expecting it to go up long position, this is a tool. So essentially the green part, you're in profit. This part down here, you're in a loss. And then the bottom, this right here would be your stop. All right, this would be where your stop loss is. If it crossed below this, you would get out of a trade. Now, the same thing, a short position, you would use this for a trade you're expecting to go down. So looking at it, the top is going to be your stop loss. This is going to be profit. This is going to be your profit target. And yeah, that's how that works. And then also this part in the middle, this is going to be where you got in a trade. Uh, some things that you're going to want to consider. You can see your risk to reward ratio. You for sure never want that to be one. You don't want to take trades where it's 50 50. You don't want to risk all this to make this right here. Ideally, you want your trades to look more like this. Like right here, this is a three to one ratio. All right, so say we split this up into quarters. Say you're risking $25 to make 75. This is how you're able to sustain your account. All right, so consider making trades more like this and more like this as opposed to making trades uh, you should never get in a trade that looks like this. This is why it's important to come in and use this tool to plan your trades. And now that I showed you how those work, I know some of y'all are wondering how I get it to look like this. So I want to quickly go over that as well. So right here, if you double click on it, here, let me do that again for you. Just have it right here. Double click on it. The inputs don't matter, but the style is where you kind of come through and style things. So right here, you can see I have my stop color turned to black and it's at a very low opacity. If I move the opacity up, you see it becomes very black to where you can't even see the trade. So I'm gonna move that back down, had it at 13% and it's ever, it's, it's ever so slight. And then next you have your lines, you can have that be whatever color you want. But I'm going to move that back to, I think that is, let's have it right there. I don't even remember what I had it. And then right here on the stop color, yours may look more like this. Or maybe more like this. It's, it's something like that when you first get it. But, you know, play around with it. Have what you like. I would honestly say it's probably better to not have it be red because... You no, know, it really plays in on your psychology and there's a lot of fear associated with red. So highly recommend staying away from that. And then, yeah, taking a look at it, that's how I set it up. All right. Now moving on to where we're going to place these. So the first place I'm going to look to set my take profit, if we're in an uptrend, is going to be at support, but not just at support. It's going to be a little past support because... You know, every now and then you'll get these wicks right here. You'll get these sweeps of liquidity and say support was right here. 
notice you get this wick down here. So say I had this right here and I was just looking at, oh, okay. So actually, yeah, let's say you see support right here and you see there was a wick down here. What I would want to do is I would want to make sure my, I would probably bring it down to this next wick if I was looking to trade this in the future. So taking a look at that, if I wanted to make an entry, when we came down and broke this support, we came down, broke this support right here. So I, say I made my entry right here because you're not going to get a perfect entry right here at the start. You're going to look to take your entry at the bottom of a range. So right here you have support. And then up here you have resistance, which is where I'm going to look to take profit. So right here, simple as that. All right, we came down here into a range where I saw support. I set my stop loss right here, kind of a little bit past this. So maybe I have it right here, like see it lines up over here. And then we're targeting the last high because we are in an uptrend. All right, and if we look at the risk to reward ratio, what is the risk to reward ratio? It is a three to one. So again, this is one of those situations where you're risking $25 to make $75. And really it's as simple as that. So in this situation, I use support, but another situation I would want to use is demand. Now going back and looking at an older example, I can see I have this demand zone right here. So there is a demand zone right here. And you can see we actually came back and pretty much perfectly reacted from this. So that is going to be another place I want to take my entry from. So coming back here, using the long position tool, let's say I want to take a risk entry and get in at the top of demand. All right. So right here, uh, we're watching for it at this level and we're not making the trade over here because we're learning from that area. Our stop loss, we're going to have our stop loss be a little bit past the demand zone uh, just because sometimes we get some wicks. And once again, our profit target is going to be the previous high. So we have the previous high right here. And right here, the beauty about supply and demand zones is we're always going to get those strong exits from supply and demand zones, whereas this was just more of a support level right here where it kind of, you know, it wasn't as smooth going up. Right here, we had pretty much a smooth, like clean move to the upside. And uh, right here, once again, stop down here, profit target up here, and we have a 2.68 to one ratio. So once again, what we are risking is a lot less than what we are making. So that's gonna be the second area. And then last but certainly not least is going to be a Fibonacci level. So this is, something that hasn't happened yet so we can just theorize here but looking at this i can see i can draw a fib right here and just kind of going off of it if i was trying to play another long position i would be looking to target actually ideally i would be looking to target the top but uh with a fib let's say I would be looking to enter right here and you know, we don't always draw our fibs perfectly. So, so I'm going to have this come a little bit past the Fibonacci zone and I have this here. So I know that if we break past this, the trade is probably going to continue going down or maybe I need to leave it alone to see where it goes. So right there. Yeah. Stop loss, take profit. And then once again, you have a 3.83 to a one win loss ratio. So, so not a bad ratio. One thing I will say when you're using this with Fibonacci's, uh, be sure to check for other levels that it could reverse to, or maybe from your Fibonacci, draw another Fibonacci. So say we came from up here and then we did this or kind of wherever you see it reversing, my target would actually look more like this. For instance, I would have, for instance, I would have a target here target here. And then if it got past that, I would look forward to probably come up here and real quick, one more tool to look for. Uh, this is going to be the, it's going to be the price label tool. So say, so once again, I said though, there are those different areas that you may want to take profits. This is a tool you may want to use uh, just to make things clearer for yourself. So you see when I click a certain level, it's like, okay, I can see that's a level I may want to take profits at. So again, you can see, say I want to 
consider up here. I may want to do it at that level too. And then ultimately my final level will be up here. But uh, one thing you'll notice is kind of on the side, whenever I draw the levels of these, so looking if I, at if I delete it, uh, the values on the side kind of go away over here as well. So I'm going to clear those out. That is how you set your take profits and stop losses to the upside. Real quick, I just realized I didn't do any to the downside. So let's go find some downside. I'm sure actually we're on the four hour right now. I'm sure we can actually find some downside on a lower time frame. All right, so right here, we got our change of character. If you don't know what that means, be sure to watch my video on market structure. But uh, basically, I can tell we're in a downturn right here. All right, so me taking that information into account, I can see we have a supply zone right here because this is the candle that caused the change of character. And because of that, I am going to draw a demand zone right here. Now this is on a lower time frame. Earlier we were looking at the four hour. This is a 15 minute. All right, so looking at this with that demand zone right here, I would be looking for now instead of using the long position, we're using the short position and looking at it more often than not, especially on the lower time frames, I'm taking more of a risk entry. So I'm gonna have my stop just past the supplier demand zone and I'll be sure to watch it. If it's just a quick wick, if say it wicked up here, if it breaks past this, as long as I'm watching it and it looks like it's quickly reversing, I'll stay in the trade. But if, if it's like, oh, it just broke this and now it's still going, I'll cut the trade. So sometimes it can break past this and it's still okay just for clarification. But now looking at this trade, we got this uh, supply zone right here. This actually needs to be a little bit bigger see if I can. All right. So yeah, that's the supply zone. So I would probably have my entry right here uh, just because on lower time frames, I take more of a risk entry, whereas on the higher time frames, I'm not as risky. And then right here, the previous high, you could go for this one. This is the latest previous high, but ultimately I would be going for this right here. All right, so kind of depending on how long you want to stick around and hang around in the trade, the first target, if I was going for it, would be right here, because sometimes, you know, it's, it's not as clear. The next target I would go for would be right here. And then if I'm like, dang, it's still going, I would look for another one right here then right here. And then ultimately I would be hoping for this, but you know, it doesn't always happen. So it, it's really, you can consider like if you're someone who gets 10 contracts, sell out of like five of them right here, sell out of another one, sell out another one, another one. And then at this point you're out of your last one. And just so it's clear where I'm getting these from, uh, I got this one right here. Where, oh, this one right here came from this spot right here. So first price target, second price target, third price target, fourth price target, fifth price target. You just learned where to set your stop loss and your take profit. But if you don't know where to draw supply and demand, this really limits you with this strategy. That's why it's important that you understand the market structure that creates it, which is exactly what I go over in this video right here. Highly recommend watching it if you're serious about trading. If you enjoy the video or learn anything, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe. And last but certainly not least, thank you so much for watching. Matthew Manuel signing off and I want to change your life.